Welcome back, Wolfpack. Verlus here in the side to use Palosand. So we have a Ghost Ground type Pokemon. You don't see this too often because Golurk is not that common of a Pokemon. And it's an interesting little typing we have right here because five weaknesses. So that ground with the ghost typing not really going to cover for itself with too much resistances. So that means we have ghost, water, grass, ice, and dark weaknesses right there. However, we do pick up three immunities. So immunity to normal, fighting, and electric. That's going to be pretty solid right there with resistance to poison, rock, and bug. And also that poison res resistance is going to be pretty heavy right there. So... A lot of weaknesses, and since we are a tank Pokemon, it's going to be fairly difficult to use, but if we can get in at the right moment, we can still find something to do with the Palosand. Offensively, Ghost Ground, pretty solid. Like, Ground is just good overall, that we're going to be able to hit Electric, Fire, Poison, Rock, and Steel, super effective. Then we also have Ghost and Psychic hits as well. Not really too many things to worry about with the resistances, but Ghost and Ground means we're not going to have any neutral hits against a normal flying Pokemon which is actually quite a lot of flying type Pokemon. So those immunities will catch up to us. Now looking at Palosan's stats, it's it's kind of tanky. It's not super tanky. Like we've seen some filth. We've seen the Toxapex. We've seen the Pukamuku. So 85 on the hit points with 110 on defense. That's uh, average for tank. Now it is above average for most Pokemon, so it can be a fairly tanky Pokemon. For standard defensive tanks, like full invested defense tanks, we're going to see more out of them. And then 85 hit points, 75 on special defense. That's actually not that fantastic. So we're going to be mid-range tanky bulk Pokemon. However, we do pick up 100 on that special attack. So we have a little bit of damage backing us up with the amount of tankiness that we have. And now it's time to head on over to Cerebi. We're going to check out the Water Compaction Ability. This is just a strange ability because only Pelosin gets it and it increases your defense by two stages every time you're hit by a water type move. I feel it would have been better if it increased your defense by one and your special defense by one because water type moves are very common as just Scald, Surf, Hydro Pump. So you're going to be eating a super effective hit and then you don't gain any benefit from it. Also, you're eating a super effective hit, so even Liquidation, even Waterfall. I know there's actually like a lot of physical water type Pokemon like the Araquanid and the Golisopod, so maybe this kind of works but it has to be at the right time that you have to be using a recovery move widening that super effective hit to try to gain the defenses so it might be able to snowball against specific physical pokemon and then it makes to where all right after you eat that first water type hit it's not gonna be su super effective anymore because your defenses just doubled other than that we just have a really wide variety of crazy moves like we have 100 on that special attack and we actually get to use it because we have stab earth power stab shadow ball the giga drain we get access to the Giga Drain, so we have a little bit of sustain with damage with Grass-type coverage. I guess that works. We also get the Hypnosis, and then it's just stuff from there. Now, we actually don't get the Will-O-Wisp, which is a bit un upsetting for a Ghost-type Pokemon. We have Sludge Bomb, we have Psychic, so we can kind of piece together some stuff, and then the Egg Moves, Amnesia, Destiny Bond, Stockpile. So, Stockpile... There it is, guys. So we get stockpile on this Pokemon, which is probably why it isn't super tanky, because you're meant to build it up. That if you stockpile plus two with these defensive stats, then you're going to be a serious threat. So let's go over, hop into Pokemon Showdown, and check out what we can do with the Palosand. Now, my thought for a pure tanking Palosand, mostly just going to be max out hit points, and then max out special defense with a defensive nature. So this is still going to give us a higher end defensive boosting, but it's going to be fairly balanced. That we have good amounts of hit points, the most that we can get our special defense, and then that's going to be pretty solid. Now, if you do want to run a calm nature, you can do that as well. It's going to give you more special defense than your physical defense, so then that's where you might just want to go for a straight up balanced Pokemon. It's going to take a little bit of finesse right here, but then we can go and find a pretty solid EV range for the Pokemon. So something like this is going to make you perfectly balanced on your defenses, and then you can kind of tune it however you want from there, depending on what you're going for. Now, for the most part, you're going to see more physical attacks, so that's why I feel it's pretty safe just going with the bold nature. Now, here's what we got. We have Shore Up. Shore Up is actually amazing in a crazy way so let's go back to Serebi and see what this move is capable of user gains up to half its max hit point it restores more hit points while in a sandstorm so if sandstorm is up it actually heals 100 percent of this pokemon's health it's kind of similar to the sunny day and the moonlight that weather will affect it but it, instead working with sandstorm so a sandstorm on the pale sand might actually be pretty good and it does have the sand availability so now the opponent has a chance to miss while you're healing up to full as long as that sandstorm is active 
that could actually be pretty good. So depending on what you're playing for, uh, if you have a sand team set up, then you want to go for the sand veil. If you don't, well, you just throw out the water compaction and hope for the best. Now, singles, you still want to use shore. You have sustain. You have a healing move, 50% heal, plus the stockpile, you use leftovers, you have tankiness. This is going to make Pale of Sand unstoppable after a short amount of time. After plus one stockpile, you can endure super effective hits, you go to plus three, you shore up, and then you're free to do pretty much whatever you want. Now, you do have two options right here. You can pretty much just go and take the straight up offensive option. Boom, Shadow Ball, boom, Earth Power. It's not going to be insane amounts of damage, but will be enough to whittle your opponent away. And because of that, you know, Shadow Ball, one, two, three hit KO right there. And then you're shoring up while being tanky from the stockpile. So you're just going to be doing more damage to your opponent than they are going to do to you. Also, you can go and tech in a Toxic. But that's going to leave you with some interesting things because, okay, Toxic Earth Power. If you go up against a Pokemon like Skarmory, well, that's going to suck for you. Also, Poison Flying type Pokemon, since you can't hit them with a Toxic, they will be able to wall you out. And we have the Shadow Ball, so just trying to get whatever we can get across with some damage. Shadow Ball is going to be slightly less damage and not as great coverage on the super effective hits, but it will give you a bit more reliability. Also, it's a Pale of Sand. It's not going to be like your insane sweeping, use this to win the game kind of Pokemon. So maybe you can take those risks just to have a little bit better on the coverage. They just want to talk to stall at your opponent while doing little bits of on the Shadow Ball. And there is that chance, 20% chance lower target special offense. If you get that, yeah, that's that's going to be pretty awesome right there. So just a sample kind of stally, tanky setup set. And then it gets really interesting because you can just straight up run max hit points, max special attack, modest nature on the Pale of Sand. Or you can also maybe go for a quiet nature if you're, say, doing Trick Room, something like that. And then you just run damage. Giga Drain, that's going to be able to heal you. Shore Up, that's going to be able to heal you. Shadow Ball, Earth Power, doing solid amounts of damage. And then since you are modest invested, this stab will turn out to be some pretty solid damage overall. Finding 2 8 KOs on a very surprising amount of sweeper level Pokemon, and even like 3 8 KOs against tanky ish Pokemon. Also, you still have super effective hits that you can play into your way, so that's going to be pretty solid. Then Shore Up for the damage right there. And then right here, we have just other things you can do. Sand Veil plus Bright Powder, that's just filthy and I love it. So you can go for insane amounts of evasiveness right here in the Sandstorm. You still have Hypnosis. Use Hypnosis, put an opponent to sleep, beat them down because of it. You know, you put them to sleep, you do damage, you heal up, you do damage. Hey, that works. Unfortunately, 60% accuracy is not reliable at all, but it is something, you know, people like the Hypnosis. They'll take that gamble. Hypnosis, it misses, you shore up, Hypnosis, it lands. Oh. You just do the same thing. So you take a little bit of damage and then it ends up returning the favor for you. Iron Defense, Amnesia. So instead of running Stockpile, you can just max out a stat. So you can like max out Defense, go for that bold nature, go crazy right there, and then run the Amnesia instead of the Stockpile, and then go for high amounts of Special Defense or vice versa. Also, we do get access to the Ancient Power. 10% chance to raise all stats by one. I mean, it adds to your coverage, and it leads to some interesting situations. So, Shore Up, that means you can't run the Assault Vest, so technically you could, like, Ancient Power or even run Sludge Bomb, go for four offensive moves, and then run the Assault Vest on the Pale of Sand, and just kind of run it into the ground, hope Giga Drain maybe does something. I don't know, Baton Pass, come on, call mine with this, could be pretty good. Uh, Baton Passing defensive stats... You know, getting an Iron Defense in there as well. So you can just turn Bell Sand into a silly little sweeping Pokemon. This, I'm not saying, like, go out, use this as the best set ever. But there are a lot of fun things you can do with Pale Sand. The coverage is surprising. The amount of utility that you have is surprising. And then you can just kind of build into your bulk and try to go for the most damage possible. That's kind of all there is to it with the Pale of Sand. You go for a tanky setup and stall, or you can kind of go for bulk damage if you need it. Uh, kind of think about, like, the Delmize. Delmage just kind of wants to run damage and then hope for the best. However, Delmage gets more damage, but no sustain. So Pelisand kind of changes it up in that regard and can maybe do better. Also, Delmage has like three stab moves and gets pretty crazy. So it's pretty much up to your choice as to what you want to do. Slower game with the Pelisand, but a little bit of reliability from the sustain. Now let's go and check out some damage calculations right here. Um, I'm just running Modest. All right, so let's see what we get out of the Modest 252 in the special attack surprising amounts of damage. The Earth Power almost two hit KOing a Silvalli. Silvalli has 95 in hit points, 95 in the special offense. It is tankier than your average Pokemon. And also, you might have noticed that on this moveset, I didn't really have too much of an item slot. You could even 
is is crazy it sounds like you don't even run leftovers on this set because you get enough sustain out of your shore up potentially that what happens if we go for the earth plate uh earth plate is going to go and boost that into a two hit ko so that shows how much damage we can do while also being fairly tanky now what about your average sweeping pokemon so pokemon like the weavile easy to it ko and even some other tanky pokemon also our coverage we're finding a good amount of super effective hits so pale sand surprisingly tanky surprisingly just survives like the icicle crash that's a that should be a crazy super effective hit but we we go in and tank it up pretty well even with life orb on the uh on that yeah it, it looks pretty solid all around with the pale sand then our damage comes out pretty good as well um, looking at some other things, just tank test right here. What about Garchomp on a full tanky set? So, bold nature for EVs into defense and the Garchomp. Earth Power looking to have three hit KOs against Pokemon like the Garchomp. So, 108 on the hit points, 85 on the special defense. We can still do that while tanking up. So, yeah, we eat an Earthquake, do the damage, eat an Earthquake, shore up, leftovers, patches in our health and then we'll eventually win out against the Garchomp. Now, do note that this is the full tanky set, so we also have Stockpile, which means, yeah, in the face of a Garchomp, we go plus one on the Stockpile. It's doing less damage, plus two on the Stockpile. We can go and start tanking up and enduring these hits and getting super tanky against this Pokemon, and now the next Pokemon that comes in, we still have that double defenses, so they're going to be doing even less damage to us. And now I did mention that you can run either the Earth Power or the Shadow Ball, so Shadow Ball is going to be pretty nice. I mean, you set up Toxic, you go for Stockpiles, you land two Shadow Balls, Garchomp's going to die. GG right there. So, Palosan has good amounts of tankiness. That one to go in against other Pokemon, like what about special attackers? Because that was a physical example. So, 252 on that special offense. Alakazam. Okay. Alakazam still threatens us like super hard with that life orb. But I just kind of want to show you that in worst case scenario, say you need to finish off the battle, you know, uh, Palosan has most of its health and then Alakazam's already weakened somehow. You just need to land a hit. I mean, completely uninvested on that special attack shadow ball still doing big damage to alakazam and alakazam does not have a one hit ko back on us even with that super effective shadow ball even with that super effective energy ball so we can survive those super effective hits we can dish out the damage when we need it and if we already have setup or well, for plus one like we say they they're like okay i need to bring in alakazam so i can hit that energy ball so i can hit that shadow ball onto the pale of sand well they switch out we get a free turn so that's plus one on the stockpile well, then they throw out the hit, we stockpile again, and then we just shore up, stockpile, and then at plus three, yeah, now we're going to be able to win this matchup pretty easily. That hits us, Shadow Ball, hits us, recover, Shadow Ball, GG. So it kind of shows that the momentum gain on the Pale of Sand, even though it doesn't have a lot of damage, it can gain into those offenses and then still turn out to be pretty solid right there. So there we go, guys. Uh, Pale of Sand got a little more complex than I thought. You can run just offenses, you can run a little bit of sustain, bulk, setup. It actually has a lot of freedom to do, and then it becomes surprisingly powerful for it. Now, it's still very susceptible to getting blown up because it's not the tankiest Pokemon that we've ever seen, especially for some of the other things in the 7th generation. It's better than I thought. I don't like its design, so I'm just going to end it here. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.